painting in Italy from the beginning of the Renaissance to the present century. Part 5 Both Henry VIII and Francis I had received presents of pictures by Raphael. We have told of the occasion when the St. George was sent to England. The Archangel Michael and the large Holy Family of the Louvre were given to Francis I by Lorenzo de' Medici, who sent them overland on mules to the palace of Fontainebleau. Francis was so charmed with these works that he presented Raphael so large a sum that he was unwilling to accept it without sending the king still other pictures. So he sent Sovereign another painting and to the king's sister, Queen Margaret of Navarre. He gave a picture of Saint Margaret overcoming the dragon. Then Francis gave Raphael many thanks and another rich gift of money. Besides this, he invited Raphael to come to his court as did also the King of England. But the artist preferred to remain where he was already so prosperous and happy. About 1520, Raphael painted the famous Sistine Madonna, now the pride of the Dresden Gallery. It is named from Saint Sixtus for those who convent at Piacenza. It was painted the picture of his saint too, is in the lower part of the picture with that of Saint Barbara. No sketch or drawing of this work was ever found. And it is believed that the great artist, working as if inspired, sketched it and finished it on the canvas. It was originally intended for a drape alone or procession standard, but the monks used it for an altar piece. While Raphael accomplished so much as a painter, he by no means gave all his time or thought to a single art. He was made superintendent of the building of St. Peter's in 1514 and made many architectural drawings for that church. He was also much interested in the excavations of ancient Rome and made immense numbers of drawings of various sorts. As a sculptor, he made models and designs and there is in the church of Santa Maria del Popolo in Rome a statue of Jonah sitting on a whale said to have been modeled by Raphael and put into marble by Lorenzetto Latti. Raphael was also interested in what was happening outside the world of art. He corresponded with scholars of different countries and sent them to make drawings of places and objects which he could not go to see. He was also generous to those less fortunate than himself and gave encouragement and occupation to many needy men. At one time, he expected to marry Maria de Bibiana, a niece of Cardinal Bibiana, but she died before the time for the marriage came. While Raphael was making his great successes in Rome, other famous artists also were there, and there came to be much discussion as to their merits 
and especially as to the comparative worth of Michelangelo and Raphael. At last, when this feeling of rivalry was at its height, the Cardinal Giulio de Medici, afterward Pope Clement VII, gave orders to Raphael and Sebastian del Piombo to paint two large pictures for the Cathedral of Narbonne. The subject of Sebastian's picture was the raising of Lazarus, and it has always been said that Michelangelo made the drawing for it. Raphael's picture was a transfiguration and proved to be his last work, for before it was finished, he was attacked by fever and died on Good Friday. 1620, which was the 37th anniversary of his birth. All Rome mourned for him. His body was laid in state and the transfiguration was placed near it. Those who had known him went to weep while they gazed upon his face for the last time. He had chosen his grave in the Pantheon, near to that of Maria Viviana, his betrothed bride. The ceremonies of his burial were magnificent, and his body was followed by an immense throng dressed in mourning. Above his tomb was placed an inscription in Latin, written by Pietro Bembo, which has for its last sentence these words. This is that Raphael by whom nature feared to be conquered while he lived, and to die when he died. Raphael had also requested Lorenzo Lorenzetti to make a statue of the Virgin to be placed above his resting place. He left a large estate and gave his works of art to his pupils, Giulio Romano and Francesco Penny. His house to Cardinal Bibiana, a sum to buy another house, the rent of which should pay for twelve masses to be said monthly, for the repose of his soul. In the altar grave, this was observed until 1705, when the income from the house was not enough to support these devices. For many years, there was a skull at the Academy of St. Luke in Rome, which was called that of Raphael. But there was no proof of this, and in 1833, some antiquarians received the consent of the Pope to their searching for the bones of Raphael in his grave in the Pantheon. After five days of careful work and removing the pavement in several places, the skeleton of the great master was found, and with it such proofs of its being his has left no room for doubt. Then, a second great funeral service was held. The Pope Gregory XVI gave a marble sarcophagus in which the bones were placed and reverently restored to their first resting place. More than 3,000 persons were present at the service including artists of all nations, as well as Romans of highest rank. They moved in procession about the church, bearing torches in their hands, and keeping time to beautiful chants from an invisible choir. Raphael left 287 pictures and 576 studies and drawings, and all done 
in so short a life. In considering him and the story of his life, we find that it was not any one trait or talent that made this great. But it was the rare union of gifts of genius with a personal charm that won all hearts to him. His famous picture of Saint Cecilia with its sweetness of expression and lovely color, its union of earthly beauty with spiritual feeling, is a symbol of the harmonious and varied qualities of the strings of painting. Giulio Romano was the favorite pupil of Raphael and the hire of a part of his estate. But his remaining works would not repay us for study of them. Of course, the influence of so great a master as Raphael was felt outside of his own school and in a sense all Italian art of his time was modified by him. His effect was very noticeable upon a Sinese painter, Bazi or Radzi, called the Second Sodoma, who went to Rome and was under the immediate influence of Raphael's works. He was almost unrivaled in his power to represent beautiful female heads. His important works were frescoes, many of which are in the churches of Siena. Doubtless, Badzi was lost in the shadow of the great Raphael. And had he existed at a time a little more distant from that great man, he would have been more famous in his life. During the 16th century, the Venetian school reached its highest excellence. The great difference between it and the school of Florence was that the latter made beauty of form an object of its art, while the Venetian painters combined with grace and ease the added charm of rich, brilliant color. Giorgio Barbarelli, called Giorgione, was the first great artist of Venice who cast off the rigid manner of the Bellini school and used his brush and colors freely, guided only by his own ideas and inspired by his own genius. He was born at Castel Franco and was early distinguished for his personal beauty. Giorgione means George the Great and this title was given him on account of his noble figure. He was fond of music, played the lute well, and composed many of the songs he sang. He had also an intense love of beauty. In short, his whole nature was full of sentiment and harmony, and with all these gifts, he was a man of pure light. Mrs. James' son says of him, If Raphael be the Shakespeare, then Georgione may be styled the Byron of painting. There is little that can be told of his life. He was devoted to his art and passionately in love with a young girl, of whom he told one of his artist friends, Morto the Feltri. His last proved a traitor to Georgione, for he too admired the same girl and induced her to forsake Georgione and go away with him. The double treachery of his beloved and his friend caused the painter such grief that he could not overcome his sadness. And when the plague visited Venice in 1511, he fell a victim to it in the very flower of his age. Much of the work of Giorgione has disappeared. 
before the executed frescoes reach the damp atmosphere of Venice has destroyed or so injured that they are of no value. These smaller pictures were not numerous and there is much dispute as to the genuineness of those that are called by his name. He painted very few historical subjects. His works are principally portraits, siblis, and religious pictures. Among the last, the altarpiece at Castel Franco holds the first place. It represents the virgin and child between St. Francis and the Beral and was painted before 1504. Giorgione gave an elevated tone to his heads and figures. It seemed as if he painted only the beings of a superior race and as if they must all be fitted to do great deeds. His fancy was very fruitful and in some of his works, he pictured demons, sea monsters, dogs, apes, and such creatures with great in clearness and warmth of color, Giorgione is at the head of the Venetian painters. In truth, it seems as if the color was within them and showed itself without in a deep, luminous glow. The most important of Giorgione's scholars was called Fra Sebastiano del Piombo. His real name was Luciani and he was a native of Venice. This artist excelled in his coloring and in effect, he gave to the atmosphere of his work, making it a broad, chiaro, scuro, or clear, obscure as it really means. This is an art term which is frequently used and denotes a sort of mistiness which has some light in it and is gradually shaded off either into a full light or a deep shadow. But from the earliest efforts of this artist, it was plain that he had no gift of composition. Neither could he give his pictures an elevated tone or effect. For this reason, his portraits were his best works and these were very fine. A portrait of his in the National Gallery, London, and another in the Stadel Gallery at Frankfurt are both said to be of Julia Gonzaga, the most beautiful woman of her day in Italy. In 1553, Ippolito de' Medici, who was madly in love with her, sent Sebastian with an armed force Fondi to paint her portrait was finished in a month and was said to be the best ever painted by Sebastian. It was sent to France as a gift to Francis I and its present abiding place is not known. While Raphael was at the height of his fame in Rome, the banker Chigi invited Sebastian to that city and in the Farnesina he painted works which were very inferior beside Raphael's. Then Sebastian tried to improve by study under Michael Angelo. This last great master would not compete with Raphael himself, but he was very jealous of the fame of the younger man, and it is said that he aided Sebastian and even made his designs for him in the hopes that thus he might eclipse Raphael we have spoken of one large picture of the racing Lazarus said to have been made from Michelangelo's design which Sebastian colored it was painted in competition with Raphael's transfiguration and even beside that most splendid work, Lazarus was much admired. 
this is now in the National Gallery, London. After Raphael's death, Sebastian was called the first painter in Rome and was made a piombatore. It was necessary to be an ecclesiastic to hold this office, and it is on account of this that he gave up his real name and became a friar. He wrote to Michelangelo, If you were to see me as an honorable lord, you would laugh at me. I am the finest ecclesiastic in all Rome. Such a thing had never come into my mind. But God be praised in eternity. He seemed especially to have thus decreed it, and therefore so be it. It is not strange that he should have been so resigned to a high office and a salary of 800 scudi a year. Another Venetian of the same time with Giorgione was Jacopo Palma, called Vecchio II, or the Elder. He was born near Bergamo, but as an artist, he was a Venetian. We do not know with whom he studied, and he was not a very great man, nor was he employed by the state. But he dwelt much in the palaces of noble families and did much work for them. When he died, he left 44 unfinished paintings. His female figures are his best works, and one of his fine pictures at Dresden, called The Three Graces, is said to represent his daughters. The work, which is usually called his masterpiece is an altarpiece in the church of Santa Maria Formosa in Venice. The Saint Barbara in the center is very beautiful and is said to have been painted from his daughter Violante. The greatest master of the Venetian school is called Titian. Through his real name was Ziano Veselli, and sometimes Cadore is added to this. Because of his having been born in that village, his family was noble and their castle was called Lodor, and was in the midst of a large estate surrounded by small houses, and one of these last which is still preserved. Painter was born. As a child, he was fond of drawing and so anxious to color his pictures that he squeezed the juices from certain flowers and used them as paints. When but nine years old, he was taken to Venice to study and from this time was called a Venetian. He is said by some writers to be the first portrait painter of the world. He first studied under Sebastian Zucato, and then under the Bellini where he was a fellow pupil with Giorgione, and the two became devoted friends. At the time when they were just coming to be men and were filled with glad hopes of future greatness, after a time, when Titian was about 30 years old, the two were employed on the Fondaco dei Tedeschi, or the exchange for German merchants in Venice. Here, in the frescoes of Titian, were more admired than those of Giorgio. And the latter became so jealous that they ceased to live together as they had done, and there is cause for believing that they were never good friends again. But after the early death of their Joan, Titian completed the works he had left unfinished, and no doubt 
sincerely mourned for him. One of the most celebrated pictures by Titian is the presentation in the temple, which was painted for the Church of the Brotherhood of Charity called in Italian La Scuola della Carita. This church is now the Academy of Fine Arts in Venice, where the picture still remains. It represents the Virgin Mary when three years old entering the temple and the high priest receiving her at the entrance. All around, below the steps, is a company of friends who have been invited by her father and mother to attend them on this important occasion. The picture is full of life and action and is gorgeous in its coloring. Several of the figures are said to be portraits, one being that of Titian himself. Among his female portraits, that of Caterina Cornaro, Queen of Cyprus, is celebrated, also one called Flora. Both of these are in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, while nearby in the Pitti is La Bella, or the beautiful lady of Yan. He also made many portraits of his daughter Lavinia who was very beautiful. Sometimes he represented her as a fruit or flower girl again as Herodias and in various characters. One of the finest of this is at Berlin where she is in a very rich dress and holds up a plate of fruit. It's one of his best works. Titian's fame extended throughout Italy and even all over Europe, and the Duke of Carrara invited him to his court. The artist went and there painted two very famous mythological pictures besides portraits and other works. One of these important subjects was Bacchus and Ariadne, and it is now in the National Gallery, London. Second was the Venus surrounded by more than 60 children and cupids. Some are climbing trees, others shoot arrows in the air, while still others twine their arms around each other. This is now in Madrid. While at Carrara, the Pope Leo X asked Ian to go to Rome, but long for his home. He wished for his early visit to Fador, and he declined the honorable invitation and returned to Venice. In 1530, Titian's wife died, leaving him with two sons, Pomponio and Orazio, and his daughter, Lavinia. In the same sad year, Emperor Charles V and Pope Clement VII met at Bologna. All the most brilliant men of Germany and Italy were also there, and Titian was summoned paint portraits of the two great heads of church and state, and of many notable men among their followers. <music>